The Gustafsson School of Business has released its annual list of Canada's most trusted brands. Taking the top spot for a second year in a row is the Canadian Automobile Association. And MEC comes after that, Costco, Fairmont Hotels and IKEA rounding out the top five. From that school, Saul Klein. He is the dean and he joins us now to talk some more about this. Thanks for your time. It's a pleasure. Thanks okay, for having me. Okay, we have some very well-known Canadian brands uh, that are making the top of that list. Tell me what CAA is doing right to be at the top this year and last. Well, I think it's actually a really interesting phenomenon. If you look at the top three brands, they're all membership-based organizations. MEC, Costco, CAA. And we think there's something about the tight connection that those kinds of organizations have with their customers. Stronger feedback loops, better information about what their needs are, and it keeps them much more in tune with what uh, the changing requirements are. Do you think that's because people feel that once they buy in in a certain way, they put some money down? Yep. I mean, you don't have to for, for MEC, for example, but for mm -hmm. Costco, you do. You didn't have to when I joined many years ago. Uh, you do now. There's still a, membership, a small membership fee. Okay. Yeah. So when people invest that money, they feel like they have a right to maybe voice their opinion more. Well, not only do they have a right to voice their opinion, they have an opportunity to. Because as a co-op, they're member-run and member-owned. So there's a very strong alignment. There's also, I think, one of the things that happens in terms of building trust is it gives them the opportunity to take a long-term view. And other organizations are more susceptible to short-term market pressures. Whereas if you look at the top ones, they really are able to take a long-term view and build that trusting relationship with their customers. Well, talk about how you get to a point of trust. What do you factor into the survey? Yeah. Uh, how do people sort of assess trust in a brand? That's a great question. So we've been looking at trust as having three different components. One is a very functional one. Does the brand do what it delivers, deliver on its promises? Good pricing, value for money, quality, innovation, those things. Then there's a second dimension, which is how the brand relates to me as a customer. Do they communicate with me honestly? Do they respect my privacy? Do they fix things when something goes wrong? And then there's a third one, which we at the Gustafson School think is particularly important and hasn't been well addressed in the past. It's about values. And we think that a key part of the trusting relationship that a brand has with its customers comes from its values. Does it respect and protect the environment? Does it contribute to the community, um, treat employees well? And that's part of what we're coming from and saying there's a, a need for businesses to think about acting responsibly not only because it's the right thing to do, but also because it's good for business. Let's talk about faltering, because mm -hmm. in this day and age with social media, it's pretty easy to falter and yeah. get attacked uh, very quickly and for things to escalate. Met right. had a bit of a bump in the past year, I'm sure other brands mm -hmm. as well. How do you come back? Can you give me an example of a company or brand yeah. that has faltered and come back and done well? Yeah, we have a really good example this year because now this is the fourth year we've been doing it. We've got the time series. Last year, we saw Samsung take a big drop. So if you remember, it was about the phones kind of self -busting. That's right, they were igniting. That's right. So combustible phones aren't a great concept. No, you don't want, you don't want to be selling no, combustible phones. Okay. But what we've seen over this last year is they've been able to recover significantly. They're not back up to where they were before, but they've significantly recovered. And I think it's about recognizing the problem, responding very well, very quickly, taking it seriously. We can contrast that with, the, we've had the same brand at the bottom of our rankings, and this is 300 or so brands in Canada for the last several years has been Volkswagen. They haven't been able to recover from the emissions um, scandal. Very quickly, why yeah. do you think that is? Well, I don't think they took the issue seriously enough. There was a period of denial. And also, it's how egregious the violation of trust is. So the stronger the violation, the, the slow speed of response to it makes it very hard to recover. Got it. Saul, we've got to leave the conversation there. Right. I appreciate you joining us today. Saul Klein, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you.